high. Let's explore how we can efficiently compile algebraic effects and their handlers to a language that offers no native support for them. I'm Philip, and this work was done together with Georgios, Mattia, and Tom. So, what exactly are algebraic effects? Let's take a brief look at a simple example. But if you're not familiar with them and you would like to learn more, the best thing to start with would be the tutorial paper written by Pretner. Algebraic effects can be thought of as a resumable exceptions, though in fact they are much more powerful. Let's see them through a simple loop example. We first declare two effects, put that takes an integer parameter and returns unit, and get that takes a unit parameter and returns int. We then define a simple recursive function loop that either returns a unit or performs two effects. It firstly performs get effect, increments the result, and then performs the put effect with the resulting number as an argument. The unit result is ignored and the function recursively calls itself. To evaluate a loop, we have to wrap it in a handler. It is the handler that provides meaning to operations. The handlers act similarly to the exception handlers, except that they also provide a return clause. The return clause interprets the final result of a computation. The effect clauses also get an additional parameter k, usually called continuation, which is the suspended computation at the point where the effect was invoked. This example handler encodes state in a simple state handler that wraps the continuation in a functional state. The return clause firstly transforms the whole computation into a function taking a state parameter. The effect clauses either continue the computation with the current value of state in the get clause or continue with the unit in set clause and pass the updated state along. We can then handle the loop function with the state handler and parameter n and get the final function that accepts an initial state and returns the final state. Note that this is a very simple example and does not show the full power of handlers. The continuation k behaves as a normal function inside the handler and can be thus invoked zero, once or even many times, thus modifying the control flow in a variety of ways. Algebraic effects are usually not natively available in the language, so to execute them we have to model them somehow. There are multiple ways to do it. We can interpret them directly, but this is very slow. We can compile them to multi-core OCaml, which supports single use of continuations, but that is not optimal since we have to clone the continuations manually. We can compile them to OCaml, but this is difficult, or we have to embed them to OCaml, but this can get slow. In our work, we efficiently embed effects into OCaml and also optimize the resulting code to be as fast as possible. To compile effects to OCaml, we represent them as monadic computations. Effectful computations of type A are represented as computations of type A, and functions using the effects get presented as functions from values to computations. Sequencing is then done by a simple monadic byte. More specifically, we use two intermediate languages, XF and NOF, as our optimization targets. Optimize each one of them and then emit the final OCaml code. The main idea behind two optimization targets is to firstly optimize with explicit effect information in XF and finally optimize a NOF, an almost ML-like language without explicit effect information. To really optimize during the compilation, we need additional static type and effect information. XF is a fine-grained call-by-value language that adds explicit type and effect information and explicit coercions for subtyping. Coercions offer a nice way to reconstruct the type information and are also an inexpensive sanity check inside the compiler. The syntax of XF is pretty standard, except that types and coercions are explicit. We have values and value types, computations and computation types, and the computation types are in two parts, the simple types 
and the possible effects denoted as dirt, and we also have coercions that serve as explicit witnesses that a type is a subtype of another. The first pass of our optimization pipeline is XF optimization. We have source to source transformation rules and handler function specializations. The main idea behind source to source transformation rules is to redistribute coercions and open new optimization opportunities. Casts are distributed and pushed inside the terms to open them. Normalization and beta rules offer some additional inlining opportunities, though we currently inline very conservatively. And we also do some reorderings, again, to offer more optimization opportunities down the road. Handler rules deal with handlers. The bottom two optimize handler application and use effect information to either apply the handler if needed or forward, forward the information upward. They mainly stem from the evaluation rules. But those three rules are critical. The first one allows us to inject sequencing directly into the handler return clause. This is very useful later when we'll have to inline the handler clauses and special life functions. The second one allows us to handle casted computations and throw part of the coercions away. And the third one allows us to use type information to discard the handler when we are sure that it will never catch any effects. The main idea of rules pre presented in previous slides is to push the casts inward and open terms so that the coercions can be eliminated. But we have missed an important part of our syntax. What happens when we handle an application of user-defined and possibly recursive function? Here, we're going to specialize the handler and directly inline effect clauses and return clause. Let's see this in a simple example. We first define a loop as before and wrap it in the same state handler as before. And here the specialization happens. The compiler firstly adds a new function called loop prime, where state handler is wrapped around the body of the original function and replace all users of loop in the main part with the loop prime. Here, the standard rewriting rules presented before can kick in. We firstly push the handler inside the conditional, and here we can inline the return clause. Then we can inline the clause for set effect and also inline the clause for get effect. We are left with this and here the reduction rules can kick in. We reduce and normalize everything and what we are left with is the state handler wrapped around the call to loop applied to n minus 1. But that is exactly loop prime applied to n minus 1. Remember loop prime was defined as the original handler wrapped around the body of the original loop. So here we can tie the knot and replace this with the call to loop prime and we are left with the recursive function and no handler at all. Then we can just lift these anonymous functions out of the if statement and we have a nice tail recursive final result. And this one is similar to the one that the human would write modulus sum renamings. Formally, the rule that handles simple function application can be written as this. If we take a look at the reduction rules presented previously, we can see how they open the terms exactly to enable such optimizations by pushing everything inside. The previous rule can only be applied when functions do not change the returning computations. So tail recursive functions are one such example. But for a more general case, we update the rule and provide another argument to the newly defined function that effectively transforms and specializes the function to a continuation passing style. Once XF is optimized, we translate it to NoF. NoF is a more ML-like language. It does not distinguish between values or computations and only tracks whether effects can be emitted, but not the full information. One important part of our optimizing compilation is the purity-aware translation from XF 
to know f already presented in previous work. This purity aware translation translates pure computations without the monadic bind in no f and no f and xf keep exactly this kind of information and this greatly improves the efficiency of the end code. Let's see an example. On the left side we have a full loop compiled without the purity aware translation where everything is in the monad and on the right side we have the loop function compiled with the purity aware translation where when the pure computations are translated as a simple lead binds that are much faster. Removal of explicit effect information and simplification of coercions adds new optimization opportunities. Coercions are also effect agnostic as they only coerce to computation type without the full effect information. So multiple coercions can be eliminated and pure term terms can be translated in a more efficient way. And this is the core of NoF optimization. So NoF has only a few optimization rules. We either eliminate coercions or do some inlining presented by the coercion optimization. Finally, the NoF is almost the same as the standard OCaml code and NoF is, trans is translated to standard OCaml code. The effects that are not removed or handled are embedded into a free monad. And this is the final pipeline of our compiler. So we firstly elaborate to XF, transform it, translate this to NoF, again transform and optimize it, and then translate this to pure OCaml. The results presented in a more detailed version in the paper are quite promising. Here we can see a graph of a slowdown factor of our F compiler in red, capability passing style compilation in blue and multi-core OCaml when the user has to manually copy continuations on multiple resumptions in green. All the code is benchmarked relative to pure OCaml code without effects. This specific benchmark is for calculating one solution for the n queens problem using the handlers for backtracking. Since the continuation can be applied multiple times, this is very useful in the backtracking uh, scenarios when you can just reuse the continuation as a backtracking. Code written with the in effectful style compiled with our compiler offers almost native performance and is competitive or even better than the comparable implementation. And this table shows the full benchmarking result. The numbers presented again are a slowdown factor compared to the pure native OCaml implementation. We can see that our F compiler is consistently much faster than multi-core OCaml and competitive with capability passing style compilation and sometimes even outperforming native code due to the function specialization, handler inlining and also, also continuation passing style. The modified F compiler is available both on GitHub in F language repository and as an artifact on Zenodo. Feel free to try it. The current implementation does not yet support polymorphic functions as the number of constraints explodes. We are currently working on an algorithm that will reduce the number of constraints and thus enable polymorphism. And just a simple example for the end. On the left, we see the generator benchmark when the value is emitted and summed in handler with the current state also in the state handler. Our optimizing compiler is able to transform the code on the left to a direct tail recursive version seen on the right. Of course, modulo some renaming and indentation when the state being summed is passed as an additional argument in the function and seems almost the same as if the human would write it and is also very fast, efficient and totally comparable to the pure OCaml implementation of the same function. Thank you.